mein Name ist Thomas. Ich hoffe, ihr versteht äh, mich irgendwie halbwegs. Um, this track is uh, um, supposedly in English. Who does not speak? Uh, who does not speak German? So we keep it in English, right? Um, so we have a very bold claim as a title. Um, and uh, probably some of you think, uh, is this guy completely nuts? What's this about? What am I doing here? So um, who thinks, who thinks uh, along these terms? What, this is completely crazy. How is this going to happen? OK, so, so I don't seem to have lots of work to do. Probably I, I hope I, I'm not going to bore you. So as a beginning, I'd like to talk about my um, motivation and, and uh, set the scene a bit, which is uh, I want to talk about why I think it is possible to do that. Um, whenever, I, whenever I start a project or whenever I speak with my friends about um, uh, projects or their life, just as we heard in the, in the previous um, discussion, we all run into the, the problem of, of scarce money. So lots of ideas out there, lots of people wanting to contribute, but nobody knows how to actually finance all of this. For me, this changed in, in 2003 when I ran into a guy called Bernard Lietar who used to be the um, head of the um, Belgian, Belgium Central Bank and was also part of the team that uh, introduced the euro. And he was, he was talking about the future of money, the way he sees it. And he, for the first time, explained to me how the money, money system actually works. Um, which was which was a total eye opener for me, and uh, I, I never could see the world uh, again in the same way ever ever after that. Um, and ever since then, I've been I've been pondering this issue and trying to find ways of how to how to how to atta at, uh, attack this, and how to modify the way we see money and how we how we organize ourselves with money. So. It seems that, m that it basically creates more problems than it solves, although it is the, the, the underlying th thing for, for our all, all of our com uh, economic, um, eco economic uh, uh, issues, every, every transaction, every economical transaction. So the current state of money, I don't think uh, I have to really talk about that a lot. Um, we all know we're we're bailing out um, we're bailing out countries. Um, we are some some of some of the countries uh, try to to shoulder whatever the other uh, countries need. Uh, we currently shoulder something like 700 billion euros, whatever that means. Um, and it's but it's gotten on the other on the other side. It's gotten extremely ridiculous with a new project or ridiculous actually pretty cool, but um, in the sense of uh, economy and the markets, a pretty ridiculous situation where the, um, the Occupy Wall Street uh, um, tries to buy debt at a rate of 1 to 30, which means you donate 500 euros and they buy, buy out 15,000 euros of debt and simply drop that. So they free people of debt at a rate of 1 to 30, which is pretty, pretty ridiculous in my eyes. So in order to, in order to understand what, what we could change about this system, which is the core driver and at yet seems so extremely buggy, we should look more into how money is actually designed. So there's, when we, when we look at money for a long time to me and probably um, to, to lots of people, probably not so much to you, um, so who thinks, uh, in, who knows how money actually is created? Where does money come from? As who, and who owns the central bank? Who, who owns the central bank? The banks. And who owns the banks? 
some private people. So let's have a look. Um, first of all, there's, there's three core issues with, with our, with our uh, currencies, the way we use them at the moment. Number one is we use positive interest. Number two is we back our currencies by our GDP. And number three is we only have one of them, one design. So what, what does that mean? If you have one, if you, if you have, a, have a currency that's based on positive interest, imagine you go to, to an island um, where you, people swap things, don't know money, don't know the concept of money, and have a hard time figuring out what's worth what and how, how, do, how, to, how should they swap and how do they, should they do that over time. So you, you arrive there, you want the idea of money, you give them pieces of money. You give each one one piece, and you all agree that this is a very, very good idea because you fixed the, fix the value of this one piece at, let's say, half a chicken. And after a year, all you want for that really cool service and that really cool idea is 1%. 1% is next to nothing. That's not a problem. So to keep the calculation easy, we give out 100 pieces on this island and let things happen. People are extremely happy. Everything's thriving. Everything's beautiful. A year later, you return, and you want your 1%. And you get your 1%. You get one piece. And then, out of, for after, for out of the 100, it goes bankrupt. Because there were only 100 pieces in the system. Now there's 99. Not enough for the, for the, for the, for the cycle to continue. So somebody is, is, is broke, comes to you because nobody else would accept um, the old-fashioned style of just swapping things. So this person needs money. You give him the money. You just create it because, um, at, at some, as, because you have it, because you can, at some interest. So this person goes back into the game and starts fighting even, f even more because now this person has to give you back the money you lent him, plus earn a living, or earn a living, and all the all the um, interest you you uh, uh, put on top. Let that happen for a couple of years, and you own the island. So that's that's the that's the problem with positive interest. Let's look at the GDP. Why is it a problem that uh, our money is backed by GDP? It, it wasn't always like that. It used to be something like gold or um, at least, at least in, the, in the money we know. But as soon as we start backing our money by GDP, we reward the amount of money going through our economies per year. That's all we do. That's just a quantitative measure, no quality in, in involved. So this rewards things like planned obsolescence, making sure that light bulbs don't work longer than 2,000 hours. A reduction of uh, uh, social uh, social assistance, uh, um, worsening healthcare systems. Um, actually, war is rewarded as well because you destroy a lot of things that you have to build up afterwards. So, um, just measuring the throughput of a society of an eco eco economy and um, using that as a backing system for the need of the fact that we need to increase our money base every year because we have positive interest seems to be a problem as well. And then third, we only have one design. If you, if you have a look, if you compare economic systems to, to biolo bi biological systems, you see that they all work along very, very common terms. They're called complex flow systems. Complex flow systems tend to find the perfect spot of operation between resilience and maximum efficiency. And all systems in biology tend to be slightly biased towards resilience. Now, our financial system is highly efficient. We can, we can uh, perform huge transactions uh, in, in, in a small amount of time. We, can, um, we, we see that when, when somebody uh, starts drying out a country by drawing all the money out, for example. At the same time, it becomes extremely unstable, which we also see. So these are three things that are inherently 
problematic with, with our currency system. Now, who, if, if we, it, uh, this is not new, this is not, this is not something I come up with, this is, I'm just repeating what, what people uh, are, are, have been repeating for a long time, over and over again. So, who is responsible for this mess? Well, the gentleman just pointed out, this is a privately owned business. We worry about monopolies like Facebook or Google. Yes, we have to worry about them, but we don't worry about the core one huge, absolutely uh, um, dominating uh, um, thing, which is the banking system, privately owned banking system, which rules us all, everybody here, just by the design of that money. Um, so there's actually um, a, a, a interesting, an interesting uh, um, history behind that. Um, the, way, the way it was created, the, the way um, money was, was originally created, the, the, the term bank, actually comes from gold traders um, in, the, in the 15th uh, and 16th century, who were the only people that they were equipped to keep the things that were of value to you at, at, in a safe place. So they gave you, for whatever you gave them, gave you a slip. After a while they figured people are swapping slips instead of going, coming, coming to the, to the, to the uh, actual bank, the bench in, in, in front of the house where, where negotiations, no, negotiations took place. And what's just swapped those pieces of paper? And then they figured out something else. People weren't pulling all of this stuff that was in, 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 in the safe place. So they could issue more pieces of paper than they actually had in the, in the safe place, and that's where the banking system was born. And there's also an interesting story around, just as, as, an, as another example around the, the dollar, um, which, was, which used to be, um, in the very beginning, backed by gold and issued by um, the United States. This, this changed in the, be, uh, in the beginning of the 20th century, and a series of, of uh, legislation changes led to um, the reduction of uh, the, the statement on the $1 bill, which used to say, if you carry this piece of paper to our central bank, do you get a piece of gold for it? As was reduced over time, and at one point, the term gold was swapped for the term God, and now it just says, in God we trust. So all, all, everything was taken out of that. Every, every real value was taken out of that, but still further than that. In 1916, a, a, a bill was passed that, with, with the sole idea of raising taxes to pay for the interest of the of the uh, central bank, that the, the interest that the central bank lent to the, to the country had to be paid by taxes, and the central bank was, owned, was, was, was privately owned. This bill never has been ratified. This is why in the States, people are arguing that um, they, they actually aren't obliged to pay taxes. Then a lot later, John F. Kennedy passed uh, um, uh, an executive order number 11110, if you want to have a look at it, um, which is also in action because um, nobody ever uh, dismissed it, and which passes the right of issuing money back from the Federal Reserve to the people. But still, this whole thing is in, in, in action the way it was before. But let's try and find ways of uh, um, performing what uh, John F. Kennedy had in mind meaning getting, getting the money back, bringing the money back to the people. So how can that be done? Again, there's lots of, lots of examples out there. In the 1930s, when we had the last uh, big recession, there were, there's, there's this one major um, and re repeated example in Austria. Very many of you have heard of that. Um, there's a little town, Virgel, a couple of thousand people, and uh, they, they didn't have enough money to uh, cover all the expenses, all the needs they had. 
They had a couple of thousand Reichsmark at the time. So the mayor decided he's going to introduce a local currency with a negative interest, which is backed by the couple of thousand Reichsmark they had. And the effect of a of negative currency is a massive increase in, in turnover in the economy, which means that the, the, the one of the two things that we use money for, which is next to enabling us to, to create an economy, is to save assets, was, wasn't possible in this. The, the opposite. It, the longer you kept your money, the less it was worth. So you, you tend to spend it, which in turn made sure that everybody had work, everybody had something to eat, Nobody had to rely on, on help from the city or the state, and it all worked fine until it was forbidden. Almost exactly the same happened in the United States, but much, much bigger, until the central bank advised the president to, uh, to, to uh, make this illegal and stopped it. Obviously, they would, they would ma uh, advise the president to make it illegal because it was, it was uh, inherently causing them trouble for their business. So these are just two examples of, of the way a currency could work. If you look even further back, um, in a time where there was, wasn't really a currency or money the way we use it at the moment, there's a beautiful, there's a beautiful image of or actually, it, it is not just an image, it, a, a beautiful story of, an, of, of a couple of islands that used to swap goods. And f in exchange for these goods, no matter what the worth of the good was, they would give, them, give, give each other jewelry. So you could see bracelets traveling into in, in, in the one direction over the, over the islands, because you would always give bracelets to the, to the right hand side, um, and, and uh, um, necklaces into the other direction. Regardless of the worth of those necklaces or the goods, it was just honoring the fact that somebody gave you something. So almost the idea of a presence, of presence, of a gift economy. And if you become even more radical, you can say, if, you, if everybody gives away everything they don't need in a gift economy, there's no need for money, and everybody should have everything they need. So this would, this would end up in, the, in a similar situation uh, as, as today, because as I said, complex flow systems need more than one node to, 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 be, um, to be at a point of, of, of uh, optimum op operation, like in, in more resilient than efficient. So what I propose is we need a plethora of different currencies for different occasions, different verticals, um, different, so, uh, dif different, different uh, communities, different societies. And we need to find ways and engage with each other to find ways of creating those types of currencies. So the main, the main ideas about currencies, uh, about, about designs of currencies are What's, what's your interest rate? Is it positive, is it negative, or doesn't, is, is it at zero? And what, I, what, what effects does that have on the, um, on the overall economy? The second is, what do you back your, your currency on? You can back it on mutual trust, which would be called a mutual credit system. You could also back it by things you want to have more of, because what do we get more of? If we if we back our uh, uh, if we back our currency by GDP, we get more GDP. We have to get more GDP every day, every year. So a positive interest rate with a currency backed by the um, the number of healthy trees, or if you can measure that, ha happy children in your society would increase the number of happy trees, uh, happy trees, uh, of uh, happy children or or um, ha healthy healthy trees in your society. Okay. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, I have, have uh, spoken far too long, and um, uh, but I still like uh, because I'm, I'm 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 close to the end. Um, we're we're currently working on a project that we call uh, Tayapa, which is a is a is a platform 
that creates markets to, to um, find out what's the best way to go about this um, with a community effort, trying to create different currencies in different environments to understand what's the best currency for which environment and how do we approach this whole thing. Thank you very much. So I'd be two minutes for questions. Who's first? Thank you very much. Um, thank you for your talk. And um, I have two questions, one very short one. What is your platform called again? T-A-J-A-P-A. -A. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. And the other is, um, you probably know uh, the concept of Bitcoins probably much better than I do. And I was just thinking, uh, was I wanted to ask you, how, what do you think of it generally? Well, I like the fact that Bitcoins are limited. So uh, we'll never have more than, um, I don't know the exact number, but something like 22 million Bitcoins. Um, so uh, this, this um, brings back a certain um, asset into, into currencies that uh, we, we don't know anymore because uh, we're, we're working on an open-ended currency. Um, in general, I, I really like the fact that Bitcoin exists because it opens our mind for the idea of different types of designs of currencies again. <laughs> um, uh, what, what are Bitcoins backed by, actually? Nothing really, but trust, like most currencies. But um, the, um, the underlying algorithm uh, creates uh, um, Bitcoins in a way that uh, it actually it, it limits itself. And uh, this knowledge is the basis for the trust in the currency, um, which... Uh, is could be called the backing. Makes sense. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>